Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. P of P of X plus 2 is equal to X to the power 25 minus 2. And we're going to be solving for P of X. What is P of X? P of X is a polynomial. Therefore, this is a polynomial equation. A special category of functional equations, which are much easier to solve because polynomials are special types of functions. What is a polynomial? We can basically write a polynomial like x squared plus 1, or 2x minus 3, or x cubed plus 2x squared minus 8x plus 5. The idea is you use a variable x, okay, and you use powers of x. But which powers? Non-negative integers, which means zero as a power is included, which means the constant terms are also included, okay? So, what kind of polynomial is gonna satisfy this? So we're gonna try to identify that first, and then we'll test some cases, and then at the end, I'll show you how we can get a solution. But the million dollar question is, how many solutions are there? Are we gonna be able to find all the solutions? Or is there a way to find all solutions? And I'm also going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha if I did not forget to include it. I believe I did not forget. So hopefully you're going to see that result as well because most of the time I like to check my solutions against Wolfram Alpha in which cases Wolfram Alpha cannot find solution or doesn't even understand it. But do you think Wolfram Alpha can solve a polynomial equation? We pretty much know Wolfram Alpha cannot solve functional equations but polynomial equations should be easier, right? A little bit maybe. So let's see how we can approach a problem like this. This is x to the power 25 on the right hand side. So that would be a quinto. What is the right name for 20? I forgot. Vision T something. Anyways, you get the idea. This is a polynomial of 25th degree. We're going to try to find, I mean, the right hand side. I'm not saying P of X is of the 25th degree. You'll probably soon realize it's that's not the case. So let's go ahead and clean this up. And then we're going to go ahead and, you know, look for some possible solutions. First of all, I want you to understand that a polynomial can be written in a general form, such as P of X can be written as A sub N X to the N plus A sub N minus 1 X to the N minus 1 dot, 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 and then a sub 2x squared plus a sub 1x plus a sub 0. Those subscripts are coefficients like a sub 1, or sometimes I call it just a1. It's probably easier to say a1, a2, a3. Those are the coefficients. And notice that the subscripts are the same as the exponents. So in other words, a1x represents the linear term, and a1 is the coefficient of the first power of x. Does that make sense? So this is 1 and this is 1. When this is n, this is n. Get the idea? And of course, there, there's an x to the power 0, which we're not writing because x to the power 0 is 1, so there's no need to write it. Okay? And that's called the constant term, in case you did not know. So, how do we use this information to solve for this problem? Well, easy, but not that easy. We can actually go ahead and evaluate p of x plus 2, and then compose it with p and to see what happens. So we have this gigantic expression. We're going to add 2 to both sides. That's not going to change it dramatically. It's only going to change the constant. So p of x plus 2. And if I skip some terms, maybe write the first term. You know the rest. Plus a1x plus a0 plus 2. Now we're going to apply p to this, right? When we apply p... Now, what can happen is the x in p of x will be replaced with this gigantic whole expression. This is going to replace what? x in p of x, right? So we're going to be applying it here. This will replace x, and then this x, and then this x, and all the x's. Of course, there's no x here at the end. It's going to look like pretty much uh, something like this. A n will be multiplied by x to the n, but x will be replaced with this, p of x plus 2, which is this, so it's going to look like this. 
maybe I should just skip more terms and then this will be raised to the nth power. Make sense? And then we're gonna go ahead and use a sub n one minus one and then the same thing goes inside. So the, what goes inside the parentheses is always the same. The only thing that changes is the coefficient and the power. Make sense? And then this is gonna go all the way to the end, maybe like a one multiply by x, right? And then at the end, it's gonna be with a zero. Now, and we know that this equals what? x to the power 25 minus two. This gigantic expression, you know what? This is super complicated and we don't even know what n is, but this gives us an idea. You know what that is? When you raise something like this to the nth power, the highest power inside the parentheses will be raised to the nth power. So it's gonna be like this, right? One of the terms in that multinomial expression. And that's gonna be a n to the nth times x to the power n times n, which is n squared. So what really matters here is the highest power of x, which we call the degree of the polynomial. So what is the degree from the left-hand side? It's n squared, right? You notice that the highest power can only be obtained by raising the highest power inside the parentheses to the highest power outside the parentheses. Therefore, multiplying those two together, we obtain n squared. Make sense? So the, poly the polynomial, this polynomial's degree is n squared, but it's also equal to another polynomial whose degree is 25. What does that mean? If, if two polynomial, I can't even say that. If two polynomials are equal, then their degrees are equal. Obvious, right? You can't have a cubic polynomial equivalent to a quadratic, obviously, right? Unless the coefficient of the cubic is zero, in, in which case you will have a quadratic equals a quadratic. Make sense? So this means n squared equals 25. And you know what? This is a huge discovery. I know some people are going to be like, why are I making a big deal? Guys, this is a big deal. Accept it, okay? So from here we get n equals 5 or n equals negative 5. But guess what? This is a polynomial. It does not accept negative powers, negative values. So we're going to have to go with n equals 5, which is not bad, right? So now we know that p of x must be a quintic polynomial. Yay! Quintic is just a nice name that starts with Q. There aren't that many words that start with Q, right? I mean, I don't think so. There are probably not that many start with X, but, you know, we're talking about names of polynomials like quartic, quintic, quontodecillion, whatever, something like that. Anyways, you get the idea. So how do we write a quintic polynomial? Well, we can write it as follows. A5, X to the 5, a4, x to the 4, a3, x to the 3rd, a2, x to the 2nd, a1, x plus a0. Easy. Six terms, including the constant term. Nice. What are we going to do with this? Plug it in, maybe? Obviously, this is much, much easier than substituting this whole thing for x, don't you think? So now, we are supposed to evaluate p of p of x plus 2, but that is p of a5 x to the fifth plus dot 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 a1 x plus a0 plus 2. And now we're going to apply the rule a5, and this is going to replace x. So it's going to be like a5 x to the fifth plus dot 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 a0 plus 2 to the fifth. Notice that this x is being replaced by this. And then a4, same idea, right? Well, this is taking too long, isn't it? Don't you think? But anyways, by using this idea, you should be able to find p of x because we know it's quintic. The only thing we have to do is find the uh, coefficients, undetermined coefficients. But don't you think there's a better way to do it? Let's go ahead and talk about what is called the second method, okay? So here's what we're gonna do. One more time, our equation is p of p of x plus two is x to the 25th minus two. Awesome. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and call this something, okay? I wanna go ahead and maybe make a substitution like, how about I came up with this? Let's call this Q of X, okay? That's probably the right idea. Q of X equals P of X plus two. So P of X is Q of X minus two. 
You get the idea? Subtract 2 from both sides. Nice. Because now we know P of X, we can replace P of X with Q of X because that's what we have. P of Q of X is X to the 25th minus 2 from here, right? So now, but what is Q of X? Q of X is P of X plus 2. If you do that, you're going to go back to square 1. That's not what you want to do. So now you want to evaluate P of Q of X using this. What is P of Q of X? It is Q of Q of X because you are supposed to replace X with Q of X to find P of Q of X. And that's going to be Q of Q of X minus 2, which is this. And that is equal to X to the 25th minus 2. Beautiful. Now the negative 2 cancels out. Don't you love that? We're going to get Q of Q of X equals X to the power of 25. And guess what? Because P of X is a polynomial, so is Q of X. And Q of X can only be x to the power of 5 because that's the only polynomial that satisfies this equation. Therefore, p of x from here is going to equal q of x minus 2, which is x to the fifth minus 2, which is the solution. Are you ready to check results from Wolfram Alpha? What's your guess? Ta -da -da -da. And here's the Wolfram Alpha's result. Doesn't understand your query. Da, da, da. Too bad. Better, do better next time or from alpha and this brings us to the end of this video thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye